Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Loaded TV's education series. Today, Camila, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the little details about sliding and slowing down. Free riding, basically. We're going to talk about little details of free riding. Ambassador has. So we have already done a couple videos on how to do some basic slides, glove down, stand up. So be sure to check those out. Should be a card appearing right over here. Should be right over. Here. If you click there and you just want to learn how to do a couple tricks, that's the one. But today we're going to be talking about the details, the little things, little things. Go do it. Go do it. <laughs> we're going to film these two brave gentlemen going down this very steep road in a very secret location. Camila, where was the first place you learned how to slide? My street in front of my house, going to school. It was steep and there were bricks and pavement changes and cars and dogs and... Well, he's lucky. I learned how to slide in a parking lot in Texas in the flat where you'd have to push as fast as you can and then do a trick that makes you immediately stop. If you're trying to learn how to slide, first things first, find yourself a hill. So we have this pretty dope one, super secret location, 21st and Marine Street in Santa Monica. If you can find a corner, then learning how to slide is gonna be even easier. So try to find a left and a right. Here, we're on a straight, but we can spot the intersection down there so we can go left and right. So we can practice toe side and heel side. So if you found a spot to practice sliding and it's got a corner, then make sure you know how to take a proper line. Remember, the rule of thumb is outside, inside, outside. You start on the outside of the corner, you go to the inside, and then you end up on the outside. Hello, Mr. Loud Car. I'm Goofy, and because we're in America, the traffic laws make uh, that uh, right safer, you know, because that's the way we traffic. So, where it is, that's the outside. The outside about right here. That's the inside. And then you go, but not too outside, because that would be the other lane. Okay, so, hello from the outside of the line. And now, my line is going to want to come right through about here, which would be the apex. And then the second outside is gonna be pretty much where that van just was, right there, but not hitting the van or going in the other lane. It's really important, stay in your lane, kids. Uh, and always have spotters in spots like this. I almost walked in front of an SUV just now. So yeah, have a friend spotting like Camilo outside. right there. Inside. Inside. Outside. outside. But not the other lane. A lot of people go to the inside a little too soon and then they end up just washing to the opposite lane. You know, you just, if your line is coming way too inside, you can't make the corner. You're gonna end up finishing pretty much where that tree is. Let's see if I can not kill myself. Play racing video games. They teach you how to take lines, actually. Full inside! Oh. Boom, out. Oh, rough pavement was scary. He would be dead, yeah. wasted, if, that was a, if a car was coming. That was an open road out in the hill situation probably would have ended up in the other lane. So, outside, inside, outside. Not inside, inside, outside. I don't know if that makes sense yet. It's, it's more like inside, inside, blew it. So, obviously you want your feet on top of your board. That's where they usually go in order to skate. But sometimes when you're learning how to slide, it can help to hang your feet off of the board just slightly. As in, uh, hang your heel if you're doing a front side or wrap your toes around your edge and kind of hang your toes off if you're doing a toe side. These things have the taboo name of monkey toe and whatnot, but in the beginning, it actually helps a lot. Lets you give a lot of sideways pressure to be able to kick the board around. But over time, as you get better, you get more comfortable and start going faster, you want your board or you want your feet back on top of your board. So this, this would be like monkey toe. This would help for toe sides, you know, so to help you crank around a toe side 180 because rather than being on top of the board and kind of dragging it along, if your foot is hanging off like this, you can literally just push the side of the board. Woo! That was sick. Weight distribution is insanely important for sliding. The rule of thumb is you always want more weight on your front foot than your back foot. A lot of the time when people get speed wobbles is because when they start going fast, rather than leaning forward and keeping their stability, they'll lean back to get away from the danger, cause understeer in the back truck, get the wobbles, slam, fall hard. All right, it was loud over there, so we moved. Anyways, 80% of your weight up in your front foot, 20% in the back. You want as little weight in your back wheel so they'll kick out and slide a lot easier. Uh, and it's much easier to manage just sliding two wheels where most of your weight is placed, you know? So that's why 80% in the front, you have a little bit more power, a little bit more force to give. 
When it comes to stand-up slides, it's pretty important to try to levitate off your board to get that weight out of your wheel so that way they're able to break free easier. So what we like to do a lot is when we're going into our slides, we'll be really low to help keep stability and build up a lot of speed. And then right as we kick into the slide, stand up and start to, well, try to float really. And then at the last second, when we decide we want to hook up, sink back down to apply that weight again in order to be able to grip our wheels and then roll away. So zoom. It kind of looks silly, but uh, it does it does a lot. It does a lot for your ability to be able to kick out the slide and then be able to hook it up when you want to, rather than just kind of like letting things go and then seeing how it ends up. All right, also for stand-up slides, you want to lean into the hill. So if I'm sliding front side where I'm looking down the hill, you kind of, let's see if I can use my board to help me. Yeah. You want to be kind of sitting in a chair, at least in the beginning, like you're, you're almost levitating like this. And with the downward force and the upward force of the resistance from your board, you'll be able to maintain this without, without support like I am right now. Lean into the hill, because if you don't do that, and your wheels end up gripping, then you're probably gonna high side. And front side, it's gonna suck, but for toe side, it's really gonna hurt. That's why I like to do, sit in the chair for front side. Now imagine this whole thing, but like lean back like that. Oh God. And then uh, the booty twerk for toe side. You wanna stick your back end out and like have your hands at the ready in case you end up losing your balance. So instead of hitting your face to the ground, you put your hands. All right, glove down slides are a little bit different, but a lot of the principles are the same. So obviously you wanna keep your weight in the front foot and less weight in the back foot, but since you have your hand on the ground, you kinda of wanna go 40% weight on the front foot, 40% weight on your hand, and then 20% weight on the back wheels. When you're doing glove down slides, it can help a lot to grab the rail because that will make sure that the board stays with you and doesn't go getting away from you. It also puts you closer to your board so there's less weight to try to support with your arm. If you're not grabbing rail, uh, you'll probably end up sliding like way out here and then it's just way more weight that you have to support with your arms. If you don't have much arm strength, that could be tough. Uh, or it just makes you slide a lot longer than you want to. Since there's like barely anything on the board right now, see I'm like barely even on. But I'm pretty much in a push-up position and be like sliding like crazy. Bah. Example, put example. Bah. 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 God, it won't stop. Bah. In this position right here, 80% uh, of my weight's up here, 20% in the back or so. The second I put my hand down, I'm gonna disperse half of the weight up front to that hand and then grab the rail to make sure the board doesn't go anywhere. Or for a front side, grab the board here so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, but after a while, you'll probably get comfortable with it and you can just let that go. And you can use your core strength, which Alberto, our filmer, has been working on a lot lately um, to get blocky abs like Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> Longboarding is, uh, is, is, pretty, is pretty chill, but it does require a little bit of strength every now and then. And when you're sliding, whatever arm you're putting on the ground, you don't want that arm to be totally stiff. You don't want your elbow to be totally straight or like bent in like mine because I have weird joints. Uh, you wanna have your arm a little bit bent like this, so that way if you hit anything, uh, you can absorb the shock. If it's just straight and locked, uh, it'll probably hurt your elbow a lot if you hit something. It sucks to hug the ground, kids, don't do it. Hi. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, we're going to talk about setup carves. It basically helps you initiate the slide and gives you a sense of rhythm. So if you want to slide right, your setup carve would be left. You're just going to carve a little bit more and then push with your back foot. That's going to make the wheels start to scrub. And uh, what Ethan was saying, hanging your heel helps a little bit, grabbing rail helps a little bit. But it's basically the setup carve is what you want. It's building momentum and rhythm, and then when you're ready for it, you just kick it and get some. Get rhythm. some, yeah. Get Helps some. you get some. Get some. Because you look the coolest dude on the hill. So Camila talked about setup carves, super important, builds a lot of momentum. Now, as you're initiating your slide, like we discussed earlier, if you're nice and low, then your body's very compressed, your legs are up here. So you can use your legs to push that slide outwards so that way you can start initiating that sucker. So depending on how fast you're going, that'll kind of determine how much force you need to apply with your legs and the rest of your body. If you're going really fast, then most of the time in order to hold out long slides, you just need to snap into position, like push out, break initiation into the slide, and then just kind of hold your positioning real quick. And then at the last second, that's when you move once again, and then hook up. But if you're going a lot slower, you're learning how to do slides, it's gonna require a bit more effort on your part. 
So as long as you're staying low and you're nice and compressed, like, whoop, <laughs> like this, those are all backwards, sorry. If you're nice and compressed like this, the second you start kicking out your slide, you have all this built up potential energy in your legs to just start pushing, pushing, pushing outwards, ha, huh, way outwards, or toe side, you can do it like, ah, uh, push, bah, twerk, bah. In order to hook up again, you need to start pulling everything back in. So if you're way out here, you need to start pulling yourself back on top of your board. It's a little bit easier when you're doing a front side slide because all you have to do is just kind of let the resistance go on your legs and your board will just naturally suck back under your feet. Uh, it's important to then immediately go back into your 80% weight on your front foot, 20% on your back foot. This way you don't go uh, high siding or losing your balance and like falling off the back of your board, which is not as bad, but embarrassing. I feel embarrassed. Don't forget to use your shoulders when you're going into a slide, depending which way you're gonna be turning or sliding. If I'm gonna be going toe side, for me, I'm goofy, so I'm facing like this, and I'm gonna be spinning this way. It is starts in your shoulders, and then your hips will follow, and then your legs will follow, if your weight distribution is right. And it's the exact opposite for front side. Being goofy, I'm gonna to turn to my right now, so I'm gonna swing my shoulders this way, I'm all twisted up, my hips will follow, and then the legs will follow. So don't forget about your shoulders, they're important. Also, work your shoulders out. You don't wanna go dislocating one of them. Happens a lot. So shoulders play a big part in slide initiation as well. So if you're going into a toe side slide, your back arm and your back leg are gonna be doing the exact opposite motion away from each other. So my back leg is gonna be kicking this way, so my back arm, my left arm, is gonna be reaching outwards. Now for front side, it's gonna be the exact opposite. So since I am going to be pushing the board this way, I want my back arm to kind of come behind me like such. Also, this is nice because if you end up low siding and you fall, it's pretty easy to catch yourself because you already have one hand there. So if, you're, if your back leg is out here and your back arm is behind you, you have this ability to get some counter weight, some counter momentum, some counter force to be able to bring the board back underneath you. Uh, same applies for toe side. Bring it in. But if you're doing a 180, you kind of just mainly need to act like you're throwing like a really ridiculously dramatic uh, backhand slap, pimp slap, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, so for a toe side, for me, I'm turning left, so I would throw my left arm pretty much behind me like this, and it'll just kind of pull my shoulders and upper body around, and I'll end up doing a 180 and riding out switch. Same goes for front side. I would kind of throw a right-handed backhand and then like a cross slap like this, and it would let me do a 180, ending up in switch again. Thanks for watching guys. Thank you for Camilo for being here with me and keeping a straight face the whole time. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if we missed anything or if you found this information useful or maybe if we should do something similar or completely different in the next instructional video. Camilo, do you have any final thoughts? It's okay. Right, he's gonna go skate. Yeah. So we, we kind of filmed all the talking at once and now we're gonna go actually skate. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> That was pretty epic. <laughs> <laughs>